Metas consists of many different key components and one of them is automatic differentiation engine. Uh, for any of you who might be uh, working on deep learning, you know you need to calculate gradients again and again for different stuff. So PyTorch uh, automatically handles that and you have GPU acceleration, acceleration support for faster computation. And even the optimizers, uh, so there are different kinds of optimizers. Uh, the normal is stochastic gradient descent, and there are others, Adam, RMS prop, and others. So these are all built in into PyTorch. And you also have data loading uh, capabilities. Um, so uh, for in, uh, I think all of you must be familiar with NumPy, right? Yeah, yeah so NumPy, uh, so NumPy are used for matrix computations, efficient matrix computations. So the difference between NumPy and PyTorch is that NumPy arrays or NumPy matrices exist on CPUs. So they are not scalable. Um, so PyTorch has something known as a tensor. So tensor is nothing but uh, a NumPy array on a GPU. So uh, everything is uh, supported. It is very, very analogous. And uh, so this is the code. I mean, if you have, say you have something known as uh, NP.random, you would have similar torch.random. And uh, you have NP.maximum. Again, I mean, it's very, very similar. Uh, you have all the functions. So uh, this is very, very analogous. So whatever operations or computations are supported in the NumPy library, uh, the analogous ones which are which can run on GPU are supported by PyTorch and on tensors. I have one basic question. So PyTorch was developed by Tensor Pro scientists, right? Tensor Pro scientists. So there was a framework known as Torch. And PyTorch is a Python wrapper for that. And, and what was the nature, what was the objective um, was this, um, uh, for coming up with PyTorch? Yeah, I, I, that, that is what is explained here. I mean, what are the key differences uh, with TensorFlow and stuff like that? And that will come up later. So uh, suppose you have your, uh, so if you import your normal Torch library, by the way, it's imported as Torch. So you can create a new tensor 5, 5, 3 ka, uh, a matrix and you get, you'd get this normal, very, very normal and very, very simple like NumPy. And uh, so you have x dot shape, uh, you have x dot size in tensors. So uh, you can use standard NumPy like indexing. So uh, you might know indexing and uh, how do you access elements. So, Everything is supported. The only difference is it's now a tensor, which is which can run on a GPU. Uh, okay, so normal addition operation, and then you can, yeah. So you can also convert two matrices or two data. Uh, so you can you can convert from torch tensor to an NumPy array. This is sometimes needed when the things need to get stored on RAM. So I think the tensors cannot be stored on RAM, so you need to convert to NumPy back again and stuff like that. So uh, the conversion between NumPy and Torch tensors are very well supported. And it's very, very efficient. So this is something known as a add underscore. I mean, it, uh, this adds one and updates A itself. I mean, new copy name banata. So, and since B was a NumPy equivalent of it, uh, so B also gets updated, as we saw in the last slide. OK. So uh, you can change from Torch to NumPy and NumPy to Torch. This example is of NumPy to Torch. Uh, you import something and you create an array of ones of length five, uh, five, five cross one, and uh, you convert it into a Torch tensor and you print it and you get a Torch tensor and that's it. Okay, so now to uh, Torch tensors can be uh, can reside on CPUs as well as GPUs. So to make them reside onto GPUs and for so that it can harness the power of GPUs, you need to use something known as dot CUDA. So everything that has to be transferred to GPU for faster computation has to be uh, uh, the the dot CUDA function has to be called on on that. And this ensures that if you if you actually have GPU service available, if you actually have hardware, so this will return true or false. Torch dot CUDA is available. Uh, now you have something known as automatic differentiation engine. So now we talked about something known as tensors. So tensors were nothing but NumPy uh, matrices or NumPy arrays on GPUs, right? So for supporting automatic differentiation for calculation of gradients, you need to wrap it into something known as variable. So NumPy, then tensor, and, ten hours. and tensor then wrapped into something known as variable. So the variable module uh, rides, uh, resides inside the torch.autograd stuff. So, Abhi, we talked about uh, this is a torch tensor, right? 
you wrap it into uh, you wrap it up into a variable so variable se cast kar diya it's like another data type or something so again you cast everything into a variable so this is your x and this is your these are basically your weights so uh, for those of you who are familiar with neural networks so this is your input to hidden layer key calculation and this is your hidden to hidden layer key calculation so basically normal normally this is this is matrix multiply so torch dot matrix multiply just you have np dot dot you have similarly torch dot mm and uh, you can calculate stuff and then you can add stuff normally next hidden layer and then you can apply your activation function which is tanis in this case and so now you have something uh, known as the target and you need to calculate gradients of all the parameters with respect to this target that's what we do right so uske liye uh, you you don't have to do anything you just need to call next is dot backward and it will calculate the gradients automatically usually uh, okay so usually you leave this thing which is passed here blank ye torch dot ones is some initialization stuff you can look it up into docu documentation but this is not needed uh, right so all the all the things and uh, so all the gradients with respect to these parameters that need to be updated if uh, in future they get calculated with respect to next stage using this one simple call that's it okay so now you have something known as neural network so for those of you who have worked with neural networks there are many layers uh, there are convolution layers there are linear layers and then you have operations of pooling and uh, you apply activation functions uh, relus and all uh, rectified linear unit and stuff right so whenever you are defining your neural network you just you ideally need to define only two okay you need to subclass it from n dot module and you need to um, and you need to define major two two functions so one of them is init and one of them is forward okay this function is a kind of a helper function which is called here but i mean you could actually hard code it up here also so what what my essential point is ki uh only these two functions are required by the library to be defined so in it in it defines the structure of the neural network ki kis layer ke baad kaun si layer aayegi right and the forward is nothing but the uh, operations ki is layer ke baad is layer lagni chahiye yeah feed forward yeah that's it so when you define these two and then you create an instance of it and you have your neural network ready okay so there are many any optimizers available and uh, so let's say we so this is the normal stochastic gradient descent so for any of you who don't know what an optimizer is so the loss function of your neural network is something like the valleys of himalayas and you're standing there and you need to go down the steepest slope so you calculate the gradient the gradient gives you direction of the steepest down slope and you take a step uh, in that direction so a step is your learning rate and uh, so you usually usually have to do that you have to do that manually so but once you define your loss function so this is your output and so yahan pe jo network banaya tha that instance that we created earlier you pass it here you pass your input to that instance of network that we created earlier here and you get your output and you would have some kind of target to compare it with ki network ne result kaisa diya you apply loss function on that and you get a loss then you calculate gradients of all the parameters with respect to loss in one single step and then you do optimizer dot step this is your moving in that direction so very very simple and it it does everything automatically okay so okay so i think we'll skip that hmm so ideally when you are participating in research you have an idea or theory and you design some experiments you pick your data sets and then you implement models and you try and test them and you add your results to the paper so this is your ideally and uh, <laughs> but uh, in practice you have to write data loaders ki i would how i would feed data to the models and how i would build my models how i would implement my training loop and how i would checkpoint them as like so if you are if you know about gans or generative adversarial networks usme you have to decide ki for every five iterations of discriminator i'll run one iteration of my generator and stuff like that and you build baselines ki such a result hai and nahi hai and you have to deal with gpus and you have to build your optimizers and you have to interface with other environments as well so this is uh, python plus pytorch enables you to do all of this so you can use pytorch with all other libraries scipy numpy and what all to do anything you want so uh, every dataset is slightly differently formatted so uh, 
they obviously have to pre be pre-processed no uh, uh, and normalized differently and you need a multi-threaded data loader which feeds data to the model fast enough. So you have something known as, uh, you can write your own custom data loader in PyTorch. So this is very, so there are some standard known data sets, MNIST, COCO and COCO by Microsoft and this is CIFAR. So ESAP to they are already online available. So it's me you just uh, pass you just pass your, um, I mean, you just, you just call this uh, library and tell it to download MNIST for you and it will download MNIST or all of the standard data set for you. But if you have a custom data set, you can write a data loader for that also. So what do I exactly mean by a data loader is, key, and you can also share them with the community. So, okay, so you, you, you can leverage existing Python code. Uh, this is an example of PAL, or PAL AI, which did something with text and all. So I mean, let's, okay, so, yeah. Okay, so suppose you have all your data set in, an, in a folder. So this is, uh, where, is the, uh, where is the data set located? Your key directory, eh? and you then apply some transforms on it. So you, they say, so if all your images have different dimensions, you make them all of single dimension, and if the ratio changes, then you center crop it, or you, and this is your normal uh, normalization, x minus mu by sigma, jo Gaussian normalization, hoti hai. the data minus mean by standard deviation. So these are means of three channels, red, green, blue. Images are three channels, right? Red channel, green channel, they are made of three colors. And these are standard deviations over. So, uh, and so one thing you need to necessarily do is transform your two tensor. These are the transform operations. So these are transform operations. Uh, that are applied on your after you load your image and this is one necessary operation that you need to do baaki sab karo na karo this two tensor is you need to do that because you eventually need everything as a tensor so that you can pass it on to gpu right so abhi isme isme i guess uh, they are trying to work on different data sets so if r10 wala it will download from the internet because yahan pe download is equal to true pass there right and then you have your normal operations and okay and okay, on the previous slide you also have, so once you create your, once you have your data set, uh, you can opt your batch size, ki kitne batches may I have to send my images, and you, if you need shuffling, and how many uh, parallelly kitna send hona chahiye, so okay. Uh, yeah, so when you are defining your data set, you need three, just say neural network, uh, for defining a neural network you needed two things, like right, in it and forward. So for writing your own data loader, you need three things. That is init, get item, and length. So length should simply return the number of data items in your data set. Very, very simple. Init is like ki, kis directory mein hai, you are initializing basically, ki kahan se and stuff like that. And get item, get item should give you the next image. So when you pass an index to the get item, it would uh, get you the next image. You have to write this code yourself. And once you just write these three, PyTorch automatically handles everything for you. Next. Okay, so there are several environments, cars, video games, and internet. So PyTorch is not built for this, but you can use other libraries which are, so they, they might be other libraries which work with uh, this type of data, or there might be other libraries that work with this type of data. What I'm trying to say is you can use PyTorch with them combined to get your stuff working. And pretty much every environment provides a Python API. You can club it with PyTorch to do anything you want. Okay, so uh, PyTorch is your uh, a normal Python extension, and you can use your favorite Python debugger, uh, anything, or you can use your most famous the print statement. And uh, okay, so uh, you might know there are some bottlenecks, and you uh, recognize them with profilers such as line profiler or snake with here. So you can keep which section of the code is uh, taking most of the time and you can optimize that if it is indeed optimizable. Okay, so PyTorch is written for the impatient. Uh, so PyTorch follows the philosophy of just-in-time just in compilation. These are all the low-level details, but uh, okay, yeah. So you can use all the SciPy, scikit-learn, every library combined with PyTorch to do whatever you want. Okay, so th the power of PyTorch is uh, hidden in this tweet. So Basically, you have a different type of neural network layers, right? Convolution layer, linear layer, and stuff like that. So this guy implemented his own layer. 
his own type of layer in PyTorch. This is his code for his own layer. I know what he does, but it's possible to implement your own type of layer. Okay. So uh, yeah. Okay. So there is something known as Torch Vision. Torch Vision. Uh, Torch Vision. So there are many popular models of. Uh, uh, neural networks that are already implemented by big giants like Google Research or so one is ResNet, one is AlexNet and one is I, I mean Inception and there are many many models which are already implemented. So usually uh, what people usually do is to, uh, to avoid uh, training from scratch they take these models and chop off the last layer and then uh, put their own last layer in Basically, already trained model ke upar, they train it and refine it further according to their data set. So that's what they do. So uske liye, let's say you want to use already uh, existing ResNet. So uske jo train weights jo already hai, which are on ImageNet. So it is it is um, it is known that uh, if you train some if you train and refine on on a model that is already trained before on larger things like image image ImageNet, you get better results. So uh, that's what uh, basically torchvision.models has a collection of all the pre-existing models and uh, you basically you can have your ResNet and AlexNet and pre-trained is equal to true. So if you uh, pre-trained is equal to true, you will get the parameter, the trained param uh, so values of parameters change as you train, right? So after training the parameter ki values, thi, you will get that. If you pass it false, what you will not get the parameter values, but you will get the structure, the layer hai and wo layer by layer ka the structure you'll get that okay so yeah these are all the models available vgg resnet squeeznet inception alexnet and then on mnis yeah so you have linear style of programming uh, normal this is normal okay so okay so the philosophy of pytorch is stay out of the way cater okay. to the impatient and uh, so apne, like you need to test uh, stuff eagerly and fast and you know anything. Okay, so these are some upcoming features and I mean, this is an old slide so I mean I guess these would be out now with PyTorch 1.0 and uh, huh, so you have something known as broadcasting in NumPy. Uh, this was not supported before. Broadcasting is key if, okay, if there are n dimensions and n minus 1 dimensions match so 1 ko bhi utne mein scale kar de and um, okay. Okay. So you have something known as just-in-time compilation. So you have y is equal to x plus two and z is equal to y plus y. So abhi tak kuch nahi karega wo because we have not yet called z. Matlab, if the program is running or maine likha hua hai, so yahan tak wo kuch nahi karega. When I actually need my z, so suppose if I am outputting it or uh, then then I am using it in another computation, then only it will execute z as that. But now it just remembers the equation, hai, that's it. I mean, okay, so here like the example we discussed earlier. So, okay, this is known as a computation graph. So the difference between TensorFlow and PyTorch is ki TensorFlow mein you have to define your computation graph before and then pass your data to that computation graph. PyTorch may you build as you pass data. So this is matlab, I'm passing my data also and I'm calculating I'm calculating also, right? So TensorFlow is different. TensorFlow may it's like you have to you need to define placeholders for your data in the in the computation graph. So Abitak, since I have not used this next search uh, thing anywhere, so it's a graph built ho gaya. it remembers what all to do, but it has not done yet. But uh, when I actually access it, uh, it will now execute that graph and now it will calculate the value of Nexus. So, so this way, uh, I mean, uh, so by chance, uh, if you have things like which you never use anywhere for verification and all, so it will execute nahi karega if you don't actually need them uh, until you actually access it. That's what the point is. And uh, okay, this is, yeah, so, that I have for faster access and it will retrieve it. I mean, these are the low level details. Uh, and yeah, so it's benefits, yeah. So TensorFlow, mein, as I said, you need to define your uh, computation graph beforehand. PyTorch, mein, jase, uh, PyTorch mein, you can define your computation graph using if else statements also. If this is satisfied, then the graph is like this, else this is satisfied, then the unit should be in the graph. Mein. You can do that kind of stuff with PyTorch. I don't know if that, that, that can be done with TensorFlow. So that's what uh, out of order execution is. 
and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. You can look up the documentation and now it should be pretty easy to start with. Uh, start implementing your models and stuff. And PyTorch is made with all these communities combined with main as Facebook. Thank you. Thank you.